Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you want to solidify the foundation of your golf swing and at the same time improve your short game, you're in the right place. Obviously the basics of the short game, the basics of the full swing are going to be very, very similar. We like to call the chip the baby swing. So basically, if you are correctly practicing your short game, you are actually helping your long game. And one of the main problems that we all have as beginners or even as advanced players is basically getting into our heads that the loft will lift the golf ball into the air and we don't have to do anything to help it. And strangely enough, it's when we're chipping as advanced players that sometimes these fears and uh, lack of trust actually come into play and we start scooping the ball, topping the ball, hitting it fat, although there's no real reason to do that. So what I want to do today is just basically take you through a few of the basics of basically the swing movement and also how they should be incorporated into your chipping. And if you start by uh, chipping on a day, you will actually find when you get out onto the golf course, you are getting into better positions in your swing as well. So what are we talking about here? Well, one of the main things is basically with every shot you hit on a golf course, you want to be trying to keep your hands ahead of the ball. Well, okay, maybe not in a bunker, but otherwise every shot you hit on a golf course, well, unless you're lobbing it. But then we don't lob it very often and we try to avoid the bunkers. So every shot apart from that, except maybe the putt. But no, maybe the putt has the hands a little bit ahead, but I digress. Let's get Back to the point, what I'm really talking about here is how do I get my hands ahead of the ball at impact? And it's quite simple. I've got to have my hands out here. I've got to turn my shoulders. How do I turn my shoulders? Well, to turn my shoulders fluidly through impact, I've got to turn my hips. So one of the basic things that we want you to do when you're chipping a golf ball is to actually stand to the golf ball with your shoulders and your club pointing where the golf ball should land. But then I want you to open your stance because by doing that, you are going to actually make it easier to turn your hips. In fact, they're gonna to turn totally automatically. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to be as active in the hip rotation. You can really just get your shoulders rotating and they'll take your arms, your hands and your club through the ball. We've talked about this in the long swing over the past few weeks and I think this is something which is imperative when you're chipping and pitching the golf ball is opening your stance up, re remembering that it's only your shoulders, your arms and your hands which are controlling the direction that the golf ball is going in. Your hips are basically making it more difficult to turn or easier to turn. So if you take your address position with the ball first of all across the center of your chest and then open your stance up, you're in a good position to start. Obviously in the chip position we're going to have little or no wrist and elbow action in the swing. It's a real question of getting the shoulders down on plane. And next to the putt, this is one of the most difficult shots to do that. And I think this is one of the reasons that so many people struggle with their short game is because you have a very short club in your hand. You should be turning your shoulders extra steep into the ball because by turning them steeply, you are actually helping the shoulders to guide the arms, the hands and the golf club through the ball. So getting this steepness in your shoulder rotation is imperative and that means more upper body tilt towards the ball in the address position and still getting the feeling of crunching, especially in the follow through this trail side to get the uh, trail shoulder down. And that will help to guide the arms and club through the golf ball on plane. If you get any kind of a flat rotation, your arms are gonna swing over the ball or you're gonna have to come down to get at the ball and you're gonna start hitting the ball less uh, cleanly. So once we have, have the feeling of doing that, what I like to do is to get my students after they've hit the chip to just stop in the position. And this position isn't the position we were talking about just after impact. It's almost as far as I can rotate without coming out of the side bend. By doing that, I can then make a couple of checks. There's really only three things or 
say, four things in your golf swing which are really going to mess it up, and they're all, to a greater extent, mental. They're all about trying to get the ball to fly. And strangely enough, we will do these things intuitively, even if we're a good player. The first one is quite simply, we tilt backwards. You'll see this in the bunker a lot, that people tilt backwards, their weight goes onto the trail foot, and they try and scoop the ball into the air. The second one is that they start to, to, to spoon with their, lip, with their wrists, trying to lift the ball into the air. And if they do that a little early, they're going to scull it and top it over the green. Um, the final one is basically, as I was saying before, getting the shoulders and keeping the shoulders on plane and getting the hip rotation. So getting the shoulders on plane and hip rotation. Hip rotation is helped by the open stance. Shoulders on plane is basically helped by getting that trail shoulder down. So it would be great if you were in a position to be able to check yourself. Are you doing this right? And that's why I want you to stop at the end of the impact. So we go through the ball, hit the chip, stay in that position. And the first thing you're looking at is where is your weight? Has it moved into the front side, into the lead side? Or are you still back on your trail foot? The second thing to look at is have you allowed the club to overtake? If you've kept the club basically as an extension of your lead arm, then everything's going well. Then allow the, your trail hand to let go of the club and hang, and it should be able to hang to a depth of your trail knee. So you don't want it kind of up on your thigh. You've got to get down there. And really, for the majority of you, you can't really turn too deeply through not only your chip shot, but any swing through the golf ball. And maybe finally, the thing to look at is club face control. The club face should be at an angle with your spine. So if you think of your um, uh, breastbone or chest bone here, and you think of the leading edge, and they should be in a line with one another. And by doing that, you know that you haven't twisted the club closed or opened it up. I can remember a lot of people giving lessons and saying you should be able to stand a glass on it. Rubbish. If you do that, you're opening the club face. So what we want it to do is just come through square, keep it square. And by getting into this position every time, you can really think of that as a station in your golf swing. A station that when you are chipping the golf ball, you're actually going to stop at. But a station when you are hitting a full swing that you're going to drive through where the club will eventually overtake you and pull you up into the end position. By drilling your body with golf balls to actually go into this station, you are actually helping yourself to get this feeling for synchronizing the hip rotation and this uh, side bend in your trail side. But you're being helped by this pretty open hip stance, which is helping you to rotate your hips through the ball. So once again, once you get to that end position, try and feel where you are. Where is your weight? Are you into the lead side? Where is your, your club relative to your lead arm? Has it overtaken? Look at the club face. Is it still parallel or square to your chest bone? And finally, if you were to let go of the club with your right hand or your trail hand, can you reach down to your trail knee? If you've done all of those things, then you can expect the ball to have a pretty good result. If you have not done those, then at least you know what the problem is. And finally, if you've done all of those and it still hasn't gone very well, then that's down to the timing. And if you haven't timed the club or the shot very well, then think about what were you thinking about? It's a strange thing to say, but a lot of times it's your conscious mind which is blocking your timing. Your need to try and get the shoulder down, try and turn the hips, keeping your arms stiff. All of these thoughts are actually blocking a nice uh, fluid swing, which is, which is being controlled by your unconscious mind, the so-called cerebellum or small brain. And that is basically 
going to be totally blocked by somebody standing there trying to do it correctly. So try and keep all of your swing thoughts uh, without a golf ball, making practice swings, getting into that position every time, and then basically trust your short-term memory to just call that shot up. And you can see, you can hit these lovely little chips into the target all the same every time because you're getting into the same positions every time. And believe you me, when you get out uh, onto a golf course, you will start to actually feel this position as a station in your golf swing. Swing through that position and suddenly you'll be hitting straighter and better struck shots even with your drivers. Hope this helps. If it does, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the, stay, to the channel yet, please do so. Don't forget to hit the little bell for notifications. Once again, a big thanks to all the patrons who are supporting the channel. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, I shall leave a link below. Otherwise, look after yourself and we'll be back very soon. Bye-bye.